While we were studying uniform motion, we briefly saw how graphs can be used to describe or represent motion. We are going to quickly recap and uh, look a few graphs in detail. And uh, finally, we will be using them as building blocks of something more complex. All these graphs, all the six ones, are uh, position against time graphs. And uh, we already know that when it is a straight line like this, it represents uniform motion, that the change in position is occurring proportionate to the time. So the displacement uh, or equal distance is covered in equal amount of time. So this is uniform motion. The steeper this line gets, the faster the body is moving. And of course, slower means lower slope of this graph. This is not a straight line, the next one, but it is a curve whose slope is gradually reducing, becoming flatter. So it is curving downward. This represents a body that is slowing down, a body in deceleration. By contrast, this curve has its slope gradually increasing. So the speed is increasing and the body is in acceleration. While this one here is a straight line, so it is uniform motion, but it has a negative slope. So the body, although it is moving, it is moving backward. And finally, here is a body whose position against time graph is horizontal. That means the position is not changing at all with time. And that means the body is not moving. Now let us see how we can use these graphs as building blocks and put together an entire story of something that happened on a highway once upon a time. First, we are going to look at this whole interaction purely in the form of graphs. So uh, there are three vehicles here. This red graph belongs to a pickup truck, a red pickup truck. This yellow line belongs to a yellow tanker. And this blue one is the dreaded petrol car. To start with, this tanker was going steadily on the highway. We can see it is a straight line, so it was in uniform motion. But all of a sudden from behind, there comes this steep red line of the pickup truck. That means it was speeding at a high speed. But hey, what happens next is interesting. We don't see that straight line continuing, but we see a curve that is drooping downward. So it is slowing down. And what could be the reason? Here is the reason, the police car. It, was, it has this horizontal graph, so it was lying in wait, it was stationary, but the moment the pickup truck reached here, it started to pursue that truck. And you can see both the vehicles have attained the same position at this time. That means the two met. What happened next? Both graph became horizontal, so both the vehicles stopped. Probably the pickup truck driver got a warning and then uh, it accelerated and picked up speed, but not the high breakneck speed it was going with before, but a steady speed almost parallel to the tanker line, so almost like the tanker. And uh, what about the police car? Well, it backed up at a gradual speed, not the higher speed with which it was chasing the truck, but at a lower speed it backed up and again uh, it laid in wait for the next speeding car. Now this whole interaction that we were able to read from the graph can be now seen uh, in its physical form. So let us actually see this animation. So this is a police car waiting uh, here. Uh, this is the truck going steadily. Uh, there's a tanker and the speeding truck it stopped got a warning, the police car backed up, the truck accelerated, picked up a steady but low speed and continued on the highway. See it again. So speed speeds up, it slows down, stops, police car backs up, truck accelerates to a gradual speed and continues. So this kind of interaction uh, can be represented with graphs. So graphs are not just uh, you know, a single body thing, but the entire interaction of bodies can be captured in the graph. That's their power.